Hey gang, welcome to our last version of Wisdom Wednesday for the month of February. Uh, you may have noticed if you've been following Wisdom Wednesdays, we usually do them around 5, 36 o'clock. But uh, due to the weather concerns, uh, it's down near freezing outside right now, which is a big deal in Austin, Texas anyway. And uh, precipitation is supposed to start around 4 o'clock if we can trust the weatherman. And it's going to stay around freezing for the rest of the evening. So we decided just to, uh, in the interest of keeping everybody safe, we may be closing a little early today because the least little bit of ice shuts the whole city down. And uh, so... So we're doing it at lunchtime, so you may hear a little more ambient noise than usual because we're in the middle of a busy day and people are wandering around and, and uh, you know, getting their work done. So uh, anyway, welcome to Austin Dental Spa. I'm Mark Sweeney. If you're tuning in for your first Wisdom Wednesday, we try to do uh, some scientific matters, some keep you up to date on things that are going on in the dental world and the medical world in general. And then I always give a health tip at the end. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a fun topic because uh, Austin Monthly just came out. You can you dial into it, austinmonthly.com on the internet. And uh, there's an article there about um, post-pandemic, the pandemic effect. And... Um, they called me um, two months ago and interviewed me for this article about what we had noticed in the world of dentistry and particularly cosmetic dentistry subsequent to the pandemic. Um, there's ongoing information coming in. I just saw an article today that I haven't dug into completely about the fact that dental hygienists who are usually somewhere between 28 and 35 years old, uh, the vast majority of, of them and 98% uh, of them are female. And um, when this pandemic started, they shut down every dental office in the United States. Only 50% of the hygienists in that age group came back to work after that. So if you're having a little trouble getting your teeth clean, it could be that. But this article in Texas Monthly was about the pandemic effect on cosmetic dentistry and what we noticed and, and were surprised at and what they uh, wanted to know about was is there an increased demand for cosmetic dental procedures subsequent to the pandemic and I can tell you there definitely was we had the, a dozen people come in that were tired of seeing themselves on Zoom calls and they either wanted to get their teeth whitened, they wanted bonding to close spaces in or even the teeth up or in a lot of cases, we, in several cases anyway, we did full smile makeovers which is eight or ten porcelain veneers to totally change their smiles because they were forced to see themselves on those Zoom calls all day long. And so uh, there definitely was an effect. We saw the same thing after 9-11 uh, for a couple of months and the same thing in 2008, 2009 when the banking industry nearly collapsed that people got this short term, you know, oh the world's going to end anyway so I might as well get my teeth fixed so I look good in the casket. Uh, I'm not sure what was going on in everybody's minds but anyway I thought I'd walk you through what what is involved in a um, Whitening procedure, we, our vast majority of Zoom whitenings takes about 90 minutes and you're going to get six to eight shades whiter, costs about 400 bucks. So that's the most common thing we've seen. We've been doing two, probably two a day average since we reopened from the pandemic. So it's a high demand item right now because it's cheap, quick and easy to get a, a, a brighter smile. Uh, veneers, on the other hand, are the top of the line from a cosmetic standpoint. In the old days, um, up till about 20 years ago, I'd spend a whole afternoon putting temporary composite, like tooth-colored filling material, onto the outsides of the teeth. In a lot of cases, I'd do one color of this side and another color of the other side, and then we'd hold up a mirror so the patient could see a preview of what they could look like. I haven't done that in over 20 years since Photoshop came out because Photoshop totally changed my world. And now we take digital images of their face with different, different smiles and pick the best one, the most representative one, and then we can show them on a digital imaging. My dental lab up in Boston has graphic artists on, on staff that can give 
people with the smile that they think they want. People come in with magazine uh, uh, clippings of really beautiful smiles. We can copy and paste that smile onto their face so that they can see a preview before we ever even touch their teeth. So that's pretty much where the cosmetic stuff starts. Uh, we even took a kid this week, uh, 18 years old, his dad's an oral surgeon, and he still has braces on his teeth. And we're imaging him. They can remove the braces and show his dad and him and the orthodontist that I need him to move the teeth over a little more because the midline is going to be off if they take the braces off right now and we're trying to either veneer or bond his teeth. We're probably going to do bonding since he's only 18 years old. But a lot of people get eight or ten veneers because that's how many teeth they show when they smile. So we start with the imaging and get a blueprint so that they say, this is what I want to look like when we're all done with this. And then it's just a matter of building a prototype, duplicating that in their mouth in a single appointment. We put temp plastic temporaries on that are going to be on there for about three weeks so that they've got to try before they buy period. And then we have a second appointment to deliver the final veneers and nobody's surprised everybody knew from the very beginning since that di digital image what it was all going to look like so and why is a smile so important well you can think it ain't right but researchers have shown that people that have unattractive smiles are 30 per 25 to 30 percent less confident in going about the day i talk to people all the time especially after they find out that I'm a dentist and they start talking with their hand over their mouth like that because they're embarrassed to show their teeth. There's no reason to go through life like that. Um, the Crown Council, which is a group of independent dentists, uh, sit, put out a study not too long ago saying 74% of adults feel an imperfect smile can hinder job career growth or success. So. We've seen that. I've seen that in my patients, that they get a smile makeover done and they get the job that they wanted or they get a promotion at work, uh, they get a raise uh, because people want to see people with attractive teeth. We get a lot of salespeople in here, a lot of real estate agents because they know the value of an attractive smile and how much that could affect their career. So if you're thinking about it, hop off that fence, come see us and we'll show you what it what what the future could look like. Uh, my health tip for the week, this is a good one. We haven't covered this topic uh, before, but eat more foods with calcium in it. Now the obvious ones are like milk and dairy products. They have calcium, but a lot of people are lactose intolerant or they just don't like dairy products all that much. So skip the cheese and the milk and the yogurt and go for the dark green leafy vegetables. Um, kale. Um, uh, um, collard greens, broccoli, uh, soybeans, bok choy, figs, and oranges all are high in calcium. And if you don't like to eat fruits and vegetables, then go to the, to the uh, deep water fish, salmon, sardines, and shrimp. They all are high in calcium. So you can get your calcium a lot of different ways. It helps you build strong bones, and just like your mother said, uh, you want you want to keep your body strong. So eat more calcium. Uh, the easy way to do it, if you don't want any of those foods, is buy it as a supplement form. And you just pop a pill and you got your calcium. So it doesn't get any simpler than that. This is our last uh, Wisdom Wednesday for the month of February. So we're signing off. We'll have a new theme next week. Uh, for March, and I think you're going to like it. So I'll see you next Wednesday at our regular time for another version of Wisdom Wednesday.